right guys, welcome back to the channel. Still got the Buick or the Crew Cab Corvette, whatever you want to call it. This episode, we're going to try to get this run and drivability issue, you know, handled. Customer complaint, long starts, well, long hot starts, really not even long hot starts, long starts if sitting more than five minutes, but not longer than an hour starts. So good. Uh, I did a few checks on this thing already. I'll walk you guys through it. Uh, first thing, fuel pressure. Um, it's low, running the regulator, pull the regulator off. She bumps her up to 50, so, you know, that's right in spec. You want them right around, you know, whatever, 40 something PSI or numbers. I'm a carburetor guy and this thing has electricals. So yeah, give it, give it, give it to me to figure out. Um, but uh, let me fire this thing up. I'm gonna plug in my scanner because I do possess one of those things. Run, uh, run fuel trim and show you what uh show you what I got going on what I think uh what I think the issue is or I'm hoping the issue is so all right let me bump this thing over get it warmed up into you know whatever uh closed loop yeah closed loop and then I'll uh, shoot you in on the scanner also guys just for reference complete cold start it's what 42 shut up car it's like 42 here. This thing fires up like a normal GM. Three quarters of a turn of a crank, give or take, and uh, should, you know, should light off. So cold start isn't an issue. And like I said, hot start isn't an issue. It's the, I wait, it, you know, ran into the store and now I'm trying to leave. Let's hopefully I'm not doing something illegal and quick getaway start is, is kind of what we're, we're, we're shooting after. But let me get this thing fired up and, uh, like I said, get it into clo or yeah, closed loop. All right, guys, in cold, or closed loop right now. Uh, let me bring you in here. Any, any uh, you know, tool zoom. We I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. Uh, fuel trim data. Thinking, thinking. Uh, what, what I'm looking at is I'm looking at rich and zero bank one, so that's driver and passenger one. Um, Long-term activity is in the negatives. Short-term activity still in negatives. They fluctuate, um, and that's the key. If you see negatives, if you see negatives on the fuel trim. Uh, means it's running rich. Now the thing is, um, put injectors in this thing because we were fighting, you know, a rich condition anyway. You know what? Let me, let me kill this thing because we're replacing injectors if you haven't got uh, got picked up on it yet. All right. So if you haven't picked up um, my diagnostical, you know, from the carburetor guy, is uh, put fuel injectors in this thing. We did uh, slam some in when he first got the car because I mean, it was running super rich. Um, like I think I said in the other video, I really haven't had time with this car with myself. It's always been, you know, stop in, you know, quick this, throw something at it, this, that, and the other thing. Uh, it's been at, I don't know, two other shops. They did work, S still ran terribly. Then one, you know, one st story time, by the way. Then one drunken night here, you know, I, uh, you know, Plugged in my old scannery tool. Looked at the uh, O2 sensors, see if they were working. They were. When you unplug one of them, you know, say bank one, forward, it was still reading. So that led me to believe something was wrong. Come to find out, they had all the O2 sensors just plugged in wrong. Um, Really quick, easy diagnostic as far as if you can read a scan tool, uh, tell if something's wrong. But, you know, suffice it to say, I said that probably wrong, but uh, plug it in right, started running better. You know, not rich, not, not anything like that. So uh, that solved that problem. But now it's having, like I said, if it sits for a bit, you know, fuel pressure is running good. If it sits for a bit, it's uh, um, 
has has a hard restart. And what I'm thinking is what I think is happening is because the fuel pressure is good, turn key bumps up where it needs to be. I'll plug in my gauge, you know, full disclosure. I'll plug in my gauge and show you what I'm talking about. But what I think is happening is those the injectors that uh, were put in. Um, my fault. I told them to order them. Uh, I think I think I sent them a link to a Ford which, if you didn't know, are the same number 24 injectors, except they run at a lower PSI. So what I think is happening is they can't, the, they can't hold and they're leaking down into the cylinders when it's off. So uh, we're gonna replace, replace all these injectors, hopefully with some good ones and solve, solve this issue and have a uh, fully functioning, good tuned running car. At least, at least that's the plan. All right, guys, I was going to walk you through the diagnostic process, whether I do it now or after of how I came up with replacing the eight fuel injectors. Uh, it's neither, neither here nor there because I'm going on fuel trim and uh, explosion uh, fuel pressure regulator. Uh, I can show you the, I showed you fuel trim. I can show you a fuel pressure regulator after because like I said, I'm not going to change it. So let's just dive in here and, uh, you know, Start ripping this thing apart. LT1s, they're, they're fairly simple, I think. I'm a carburetor guy. This is new to me. I'm kidding. All right, what do I need? I think there are eights up there, or tens. I think. Ten, yep. Unbolt the fuel rail. Make sure you lose your hardware. Yes, this is pretty rigged. Hello, Leaf. Oh, just really. and a magical Phillips bit. Good. Forgot we put that in there. This thing's pretty straightforward. You got the four bolts, or yeah, bolts on the top, and then your injectors. Pop these harnesses loose. Come on. Wiggle. Come on. Rubber thing go back on. And off. All right. Now this fuel rail, <laughs> now this fuel rail should just, you know, lift off now. Um, like I said, it's pretty, pretty straightforward to do these things. It might gush a little gas just because it was primed. That's one side. There we go. You know, just, just make a mess with the fuel. But there you go. Fuel rails off. We'll pop out the old injectors. Make sure the O-rings that are on them, if they're in the rail or just in general, you have them all. All right, guys. Uh, all the old news injectors, they're out. But developments have happened, and uh, 
I was sent the wrong injectors. Great. Fortunately enough for me, the original injectors that came with this car were in the back of it still. So I just kind of cleaned them up and we're going to shove them in because I'm hoping these are OG GMs, uh, original. Uh, and the only reason they were replaced was, I think I said, it was running rich. Originally thought this was the issue. And, um, well, turned out to be the O2 being wired in backwards. So let me plug these things in. Hope they work and uh, fire this thing up and see if our fuel trims uh, change. One of the cylinders did have a misfire and I'm not 100% sure if it was an injector issue or if it was, uh, you know, just the engine having, you know, organ donor, donor, donor failure through stuff. So let me get these things in and uh, I'll get back to you. Or, you. or you can watch me plug them in. I mean, I don't care. I also put grease on them. Just add in the uh, installation process. But they're straight, straight forward. They just pop in. Installation is, you know, just like the removal. Same thing with this side, it just they just plug in. Get them in, get them seated, and then uh, plop the uh, the fuel rail down on top of it, and hope for no leaks. Wiggles, jiggles, jiggles, and wiggles. The other side homed. This damn harness log. There we go. Oh, tapping. are seated. All right, guys, the uh, new old injectors that originally I think came out of this car, hopefully, like I said, they're original GM injectors, the Rochester style, and not the ones that were in there. Um, let me twist the key a couple times uh, to prime the system, and hopefully it just, you know, lights off. I mean, that's ideally what I want. And if it does, We'll see what the fuel trims come into. Because remember, they're running on the rich side. I want to see on the lean side. Or zero to lean. But let's twist this thing a couple times and uh, heal prime. I love when she just lights off. And 
with us. All right, I'm gonna check, you know, just went to idle up, get her back in the closed loop again, um, check for leaks. I'll plug in my scan tool, sh show you what it's reading at. Hopefully it looks good. And uh, get this thing off the rack and take it for a test drive. All right, got the car idling. Uh, computer machines, uh, you know, plugged in. Right now, reading the uh, fuel trim, we're switching from, uh, if you can see it, uh, negative one, negative one, uh, negative two, and zero, I think it pops down to on uh, the short term. Oh, call me a liar. Zero. And it's fluctuating between there. It's better than the hard, uh, I think it was showing like two and three, or still showing rich, but it's going on the lean side also. The car is exactly as it was with new injectors, so. Let me get some miles on this thing and uh, see how it does and reread this after a drive cycle. I'm actually gonna go and pick up the owner right now. Um, so, car will be back, but probably part three, because there's still work to be done, but he needs the car back. But let me get all the cameras and stuff set up and uh, let's go surprise him with this thing, because I don't think he's expecting me to get him in it. guys back to the shop test drive and pick up you know went good doesn't feel like it's sluggish anymore or you know gonna die at the lights so obviously that's a plus steering um if you watch the first you know first video on this car 
Uh, we did a little suspension on it, uh, you know, front end. Still needs an alignment, um, but you know what? The brakes work good. Uh, it handles, well, like an unaligned car, but it's not doing the, you know, 1990s or 1980s waterbed anymore. That's, that's, she, race car. But with that said, engine performed well. The injectors, uh, I think, were so, uh, solved the issue with the run and drivability. Um, what, what else? The car will be back. There's a couple odds and ends I couldn't get to because shipping. And we're actually going to replace these fuel injectors with brand new uh, Rochester units, um, not these that have been in, you know, however many miles. Um, but yeah, everything everything went well. Uh, I need. I need. Well, he's gonna take the car, get an exhaust system put on, because I know there's some leaks. I don't know if you can hear any of the audio, but it does have some leaks, which might be affecting fuel trim. Um, they, one of them is definitely pre-CAT or pre-O2 sensor. So yeah, that, that could be an erroneous reading. I'm getting that the car is reading and you know, stuff's happening, rambling. Anyway, he has some odds and ends to do to this car. It will be back for my odds and ends. I got to wrap up, but with all my rambling aside, like always, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. If you do, I promise you we will chit-chat. I mean, thanks for watching and, you know, see you on the next one.